Hi everyone, it's Lynn Dion here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today I wanted to show you how I made these little candied apple goodie bags. We're going to be using products from Lawn Fawn today, but what I did want to show you was a few different tricks that I used to create these candied apples. Um, using your dyes, looking at your dyes in a little bit different uh, way than you normally would use them. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to be starting with this die set from Lawn Fawn. This is the outside in stitched apple stackables, and we're going to take that largest one. We're going to be die cutting two of these out of the Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock. So for this first one, we're going to be using wild honey, spiced marmalade, candied apple, and aged mahogany. And these are the Distress Oxide inks. So I'm going to start off with that wild honey and I'm going to put that right down the center and I want a nice thick coating of that. And these are the Distress Oxide inks and they have a nice creamy smooth finish to them. So they blend very easily. So now I'm going to the Spice Marmalade and I'm going to go right up to that um, wild honey color and then I'm just going to kind of overlap those a little bit. And then for my third color, I'm going to take the candied apple and I'm going to go all the way to the edge. And I'm not doing any real blending yet. I'm going to do that here in a second. So now I'm going to go back to the Spice Marmalade applicator and just blend that red and orange together. And then I'm going to go back to that wild honey and then I'm going to blend those together again. So now I'm going to take the aged mahogany and just kind of go around the edges of this a little bit. I just wanted to add a little bit more of a darker shadow around the edges here. And you can add as much or as little of this as you want. So now I'm just going back in the same order with my applicators and blending everything together again. And you can see how pretty that is. So now for my green apple, I'm going to use mustard seed, twisted citron, and mowed lawn. So I'm starting off the same way with the mustard seed right down the center here. Then I'm going to go to my twisted citron and go right up against that yellow color down both sides here. And then I'm going to grab that mowed lawn and go right to the edges. And then again, I'm going to go in the reverse order with my uh, blender with my blending again from uh, darkest to lightest here and just blend those out. And you can always go back and add another layer of color if you didn't think it was dark enough, but I thought that looked really good for the little green apples. So now to do the candied part, I'm using the stitched mountain borders. So I've gone ahead and cut two more of the apples from the Bristol Smooth cardstock, and I don't need the whole thing, so I'm just gonna use part of it here. And I want to make sure that the die cutting, the cutting edge is at the top here. And I have two, one for the red apple and one for the green. So I'm going to run those through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 machine. And now you can see how those are going to sit right at the bottom of each of those apples. So now I want to create the caramel portion here. So I'm using antique linen, brushed corduroy, and gathered twigs to do my coloring. So I'm starting off with that antique linen and I'm just going to apply a nice thick coating of that all over. Now I'm going to go to the uh, brush corduroy and I'm just going to apply that maybe about three quarters of the way from the bottom up. And now I'm going to the darkest color which is the gathered twigs and I'm just going to go up about a third of the way here. And now I'm going back again in reverse order and blending these out. So there you can see that makes a really pretty caramel color. And that's going to sit right on the bottom of each of our apples. So now using the Lawn Fawn Paper Bag 100 pound cardstock, I'm going to die cut the, the little sticks that we need. So I'm using the handle from the basket. This is the stitched basket die set. And I want that handle, and I'm going to die cut two of those. Because that's going to give me that nice stitched edge on each of the little handles here. So I'm, I'm going to die cut two of these, and that's just so I can glue them back to back. 
But you'll see that when it die cuts, it leaves that little score mark at the top. For the basket, we're going to get rid of that. We're going to use the simple gift card die set just to round off the top of that little stick that we're creating. So I just want to go below that score line that was created before. I'm going to tape this in place and center it on that curve. And then I'm going to run those through my Sizzix Sidekick machine. And I'm going to run both of those through the same way. And that's going to finish off the top there with that little rounded edge. So now that I have both of those done, I'm going back to my gathered twigs and I'm going to just put a little bit of ink all the way around the top and the sides of those just to give a little bit of a shadow there, leaving it the lightest down the center of the sticks. So this is just another way of looking at your stamps and dies just to see what you might have that you can turn into something else. And I love to be able to do that. So now using my Lawn Fawn quarter inch uh, double sided tape, I'm going to go ahead and put tape on the back of these of this one here. And then I'm going to remove the backing and attach these two together. And that's just going to give a, a little bit more weight to it because it is kind of the handle on our little box here. And now that's going to get attached to the back of the apple. So I'm going uh, to attach these together here now. I can attach the, uh, the caramel portion to the apple. And then I'm going to go ahead and attach the popsicle stick as well. And I'm just centering that there. So I went ahead and did the same thing for the green apple. So now using the fall fling six by six inch petite paper pack, I'm gonna be using that green. And I'm gonna die cut this leaf. And this is from the fall tiny tags collection. And you can see there's a lot of cute little tags in that collection. So I'm gonna die cut this two times, once out of the green leaf paper, and once out of the Strathwire 100 pound smooth cardstock. And that's gonna leave a beautiful stitched edge all the way around our little tag here. So those two will get attached together. So I'm using my Lawn Fawn glue and I'm just gonna attach these two together. I just wanna make sure I line them up. And now to get rid of that little white edge all the way around there, I'm gonna go back to my Distress Oxide inks and I'm gonna use the Forest Moss. And I'm just gonna brush a little bit of that color all the way around the edges here. And again, that's just to get rid of that little white edge there. Now for the sentiment, I'm gonna use Thankful For You from the Tree Before and After stamp set. And you can see that I cut that stamp in half. And now I'm going to use my Tombow mini glue tape and I'm just going to tape that onto my Misty stamp positioner just to hold that in place while I do my stamping. So I've got thankful on the top and for you on the bottom and I'm going to be stamping this with my archival ink in the vintage photo. And I will give you the information for all these products down below. So just check for the listing below for all the products I'm using today. Now when you are stamping with the dye inks, sometimes I just press and hold a little bit longer just to let that ink transfer to my paper. And this did take two stampings in order to get it nice and dark. So just kind of press and hold for a second or two and let that ink transfer. And you can see there we get a really nice stamping. So now I'm gonna grab this little B and this is from the Bugs and Kisses stamp and coordinating die set. And then I'm gonna stamp that with my Versafine Onyx Black Ink. And I'm gonna go ahead and stamp three of these. Now to do my coloring, I'm gonna use my Distress Markers in Tumbled Glass, Wild Honey, Mustard Seed, and Spun Sugar. And I'm gonna start with that lightest color first. Then I'm coming in with the darker color, just along the edges. And then I'm also using my Tim Holtz 
water brush. This is a detailer tip water brush, and I'm going to pull those colors together. And I'm just cleaning it off if it gets a little too dark on a piece of scrap paper there. And now I'm using the tumbled glass, and I'm just going to put a little down at the base of the wing there and pull it out towards the edges. And then going to the sponge sugar, I'm just going to put a little bit of pink on the cheeks. And I've go gone ahead and colored and die cut all six of these. Now I'm going to grab my brand new Lawn Fawn glitter pen and I'm going to go ahead and put glitter on the wings. And again, I did that for all of these. And you can see there, it gives a little bit of sparkle there to the wing. Now with the Fall Fling 12 by 12 inch paper pack, I'm going to be using that uh, florally pattern and it has little acorns on the back. So I've cut this down to 6 inches by 12 inches and we're going to be using the goodie bag die and we're going to go ahead and cut this two times. So it will fit on this 6 by 12 piece of paper. You uh, die cut it one way and then turn it the other way and you can get two out of this one piece of paper. So now that I have both of those die cut, I'm going to go ahead and cut that top off. And so I'm lining it up in my paper trimmer at one and one quarter inches. So I'm cutting one and a quarter inches off of the tops here. So I did that the front of the bag and now I'm doing the side of the bag. So you can see I've cut those two pieces off. And I'm going to do the same thing for the second one here. So it's one and one quarter inches that I'm cutting off the, t the front and the sides of these. And that's just going to bring the bag down below the apple when we go to assemble this so that it, it won't really be sticking up above the apple. So you can see it does uh, score all those little lines in it for us. So we're going to go ahead and follow those score lines. I'm going to create the two tabs for the side of the bag here. And I'm just going to go ahead and that's the little gusseted section on the side of the bag. So you just lice, lightly press it with your hands a little bit just to create that, get that little bit of a gusset going there. And then I'm going to go ahead and fold all the rest of these score lines on this second one. And that score line there I didn't do on the first one, so I'm going to go back and do that now. So now that we have everything pressed out, and again that little gusset, we're going to go ahead and line these up. So first I want to put a little bit of tape, my quarter inch score tape, on each of these tabs. Now we want to line these up, and this is the way this is going to go. It's going to kind of form like a cross shape here. So what we want to do is put tape on that bottom panel, that bottom rectangle. And I'm putting plenty of tape there because I want to make sure it's nice and secure. And then I'm going to remove the backing from that tape and I'm going to line those two rectangles up together here and then just press that out. And now I can remove the backing from these side tabs and go ahead and attach everything together here. So I'm going to remove the backing from each of those tabs and connect those together. And then once I've done that, I'm going to grab my bone folder and I'm just going to press those tabs out really well just to make sure everything's nice and secure. And now you can see that presses in a little bit and creates that gusset fold. So now that'll sit right behind and below the apple there. So I can go ahead and attach that. I just want to make sure I don't put any tape in the two corners at the bottom because those are going to show. So I'm going to put three, three strips of the tape here. That should be plenty to hold that apple in place. But you do want to make sure the apple is flush with the table when you connect these two. So it just slide it up against that bag and then press it in place. And that way it'll sit nice and flat when it's on the table. So you can see there we have those two complete. So now I'm going to go ahead and attach the little leaf to the front of the apple here. And I'm going to be using this cord. This is hemp cord from Lawn Fawn. And this is the lime color. 
and I'm just gonna cut a strip of this and then I'm gonna string it through that leaf there and I'm gonna tie a bow. And this is where I could fuss all day with these little bows, but it's really simple, just tying a, a regular bow. And then I'm just gonna snip off the excess there. Now I did wanna kind of hold that leaf in place. So I'm grabbing one of the Gina K foam squares I'm gonna place it underneath there, and then I'm gonna remove the backing and just kind of stick that in place so it doesn't move around. Now I've got my three little bees, and I'm just gonna use my fingers here just to curl up the wings a little bit on each side. And I'll be positioning those three on the front of this apple here. I'm gonna take my glue again, and I'm just gonna put glue right down the center of each of these bees and glue them in place. And then I went ahead and did the same thing for the green one. So now I'm gonna grab my Jelly Roll white gel pen and just add a little highlight to the apple and to the popsicle stick. So I'm just making one long kind of dash and then a couple little dots after that. And I did the same for both of these. So here you can see our completed candied apple goodie bags. And I just think these are so cute. I love that pattern paper in the background. And again, try to think of your dyes in different ways. We use the mountain border dye to create that drippy caramel. And we use that little uh, gift basket handle to create the popsicle sticks. And we also trimmed down that goodie bag just to fit behind that apple. So there's lots of little different things you can do with your stamps and dies. And here you can see I put a little stuffing in there and we can add some treats or make this a little Thanksgiving uh, place setting. So have fun. I hope you give it a try. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to visit me at pinkwhisperdesigns.com. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.